Hello friends, welcome to Knitography. I'm Patricia and I'm coming to you from my studio in the middle of Norway. I hope you've been really well since the last time we visited. I thought last weekend that I would um, pop a vlog up and I did record in the morning, but the sun came over the mountain and I just had to get out into the sun. So the day flew away and I didn't finish my recording. And then on Sunday I went live and it just seemed redundant to post, um, to to post that video. So it is Sunday again and um, here I am. I spent yesterday uh, working in my studio and I spent the morning out in the sun. So today is bitter cold and gray. It was the perfect day to pop in and spend a little time with you and to share uh, some stories from my farm. So I have been very busy since the last time we met and I have a lot to share with you. Um, I'm a little bit of a mess because I, I did get outside. Um, but we have been having temperatures of minus 20, minus 16, minus 10, minus 9. And the temperature dropped again today. So um, I got out for a while, but there isn't any really... It's a bit of a cloudy day, so I've come in now. I've warmed myself up with a cup of tea. And I'm ready to tell you uh, some stories since the last time we met. Um, I hope you are well. And if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know lots of the stories. But hopefully I can, yeah, shed a bit more um, light on them and give you an update. And if you're new to the channel, I just want to say welcome. Um, I have had a lot of new um uh, people that have come along, uh, possibly because of the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Um, I have been chosen, uh, Knitography has been chosen to um, uh, be one of the uh, podcasters that uh, will, yeah, be featured in the Podcaster Lounge uh, at Edinburgh Yarn Festival, and I am very grateful uh, for that encouragement. Um, I am a small vlog. I am a regional uh, vlog. In other words, I just feel like um, it, you know, my stories and what I'm interested in is very narrow compared to a lot of other uh, podcasters and vloggers. But um, I just want to say thank you for um, for those of you that are here and that that value this um yeah, this kind of a regional vlog. Um, I just care about connecting and telling stories and uh, mostly it's about mittens and the Selbu area and Selbu mittens. Um, but I knit all kinds of things and uh, yeah, I just, I don't know how to describe it, but I really, really appreciate being chosen and the opportunity for a wider audience to hear my stories and to visit me here on the farm. And so, yeah, I just wanted to welcome you if you're new. And if you are here uh, because you have stuck with me and enjoyed the stories, you are so welcome. And I, so many of you, I feel close to and know your stories and you share your stories with me and that's what really keeps me coming back. I never dreamed that I would continue this after um yeah, after I shared uh most of the stories of the Selbu Walter Mitten book. Uh but I realized there are a lot of stories to tell and I have I have more stories that I want to share. So Today I'm going to share some farm stories. I'm going to tell you about some collaborations I've been working on. I'm going to tell you about some upcoming projects. Yeah, there's lots to share. I'm a bit of a mess, as I said, because I was outside, but um, on the weekends I take it easy and I relax and I just keep myself cozy. I've got on my rag socks and my shawl and uh and i'm just yeah just taking it easy with a warm coffee and um in this bitter 
cold of deep winter here. I am looking forward for, to spring. Um, I'm really looking forward to winter break that is coming up because I enjoy skiing. I'm an avid skier uh, cross country and uh, I always use my winter break for knitting and skiing and soaking up the sunshine. So I am counting the days. I think we have another week or so to go, but I will have a whole week um, to get out and ski and um, I'm looking forward to that. I have not been skiing as much since I injured my back but I have been going to acupuncture and physical therapy and I am so much better now. Uh, I'm feeling stronger yeah almost back to myself. I haven't been running yet um, so that has uh, yeah I really feel that in my body. I I know that I'm the kind of person that has to keep moving so not having run, I've been a little bit down. I can see it in my knitting bag book. I can see how I'm feeling uh, as I journal and reflect every day uh, before I knit. If you don't know about the knitting bag book, I hope you'll go back and um, hear about that. But I notice the changes in my body and in my spirit. And I'm looking forward to getting back really moving hard with running and skiing soon because it you do notice the change in your body even that I eat close to the earth and uh, yeah and all of those things you notice when you're not as active and I'm a person that must stay completely active uh, I'm a short person and I've got to maintain so it just affects every part of my being, my mood, my energy level. So I've noticed it in my knitting bag book. And I've been journaling a lot of things about, um, about deep winter in my knitting bag book. And I can see that I really am looking forward to sun and spring. So most of you that follow me on Instagram will know that two weeks ago, well, possibly three weeks ago, I launched my first product from the farm. A product that is completely made from the earth, from the trees here on our little farm, from, uh, from the bees of my local farmer, from my own two hands, with a bit of a modern design and modern the use of some modern technology. I think it's just beautiful to be able to find balance between the old and the new. This is something that means a lot to me. I am very, very concerned about our planet and overconsumption. And uh, yeah, I'm not the only one, but it's very, very important to me. So I want to be really careful with my choices. And um, when this product came to mind and I wanted to make this reproduction, I was, yeah, people try, you know, I, I was trying to make the wood that is used to make it and everyone kept trying to talk me into something easy and quick and I just wasn't having it. And for those of you that have supported my little farm dream and you're waiting, I want you to know that when you're waiting, you might be, I mean, your waiting is not as long as... I have projected because things are going really well and I have gotten some sponsorship that is making things go even smoother. But when you're waiting, I want you to know that you're waiting for something that is worth waiting for. Um, this is not a um, mass production. This is not something that I'm doing to have a quick solution because that is just not going to happen. You're waiting for something that is building a dream bit by bit, close to the earth. It's a slow process. I'm learning patience from it. And I'm really, I'm really thankful if you're if you're willing to be a part of that. You know, in our in our world, in our society, you can go and buy anything you want. You can buy it in plastic, you can buy it in um so many materials that are a quick fix but I think it takes a lot to wait for something that is handmade 
that takes time to produce, that is something that you took right from the earth. Um, those kind of things take time, and that is what's happened. We have lost so many beautiful things because we want something quick. We want it right now. I'm also learning this lesson. Um, I know as a beginning knit knitter, and my studio is full of examples of it, I wanted things I, I, then. I wanted it now. I could not wait. I wanted it. And I'm a person that is very, very easily influenced by aesthetics and color. So if I see something beautiful and it, I just, I just have to have it. But I am trying to walk a new path of really waiting for something beautiful and not being in a rush for something. So I just wanted to preface that because this product that I am producing, I am producing with my own two hands and it takes time and it takes, um, yeah, to make it as beautiful as I think it is. So I will tell you that this uh, product is a reproduction of a tool that you can find on page 58 of the Selbu Vaulted uh, book. Uh, these were used historically to prepare the uh, mittens for sale. And also I have taken the measurements and the dimensions from this book. They are modern standards, but I have started here. So this book is exactly where I was inspired and where I have gotten my research and information from. So most of you already know, but what I have done is I have recreated the Tara Mollet, the tree measurements. These are uh, the wooden blockers that were used by the, um, the Selbu Husflieden uh, when they were going to block the mittens for sale. Now, you, you can find that in the book. But um, what I wanted to do after I found out about these tools and I realized that they have become extinct, actually. Um, I've not seen them in Norway. I only saw um, sock and mitten blockers on um, podcast. And um, yeah, I know Knit Pro uh, creates plastic ones. There's a lot of plastic ones. And there's there are wooden ones also. But most of the wooden ones that you'll find are covered in glue, and I just did not want that. I wanted everything to be as natural as possible as they would have been uh, historically. So for the last year, I have been working on this, and I might have just said it, but I'm going to say it again. Um, as I was working on this project, a lot of people tried to t talk me into taking the quick road. Do this quickly. Put glue on it. Put lacquer on it. Do this. Do that. And you can make the board so much cheaper, so much easier if you um, mix it with glue and all of these things. And I just wasn't having it. I wanted a product that came right from our farm that was as natural as, as possible um, of course, I was limited to a four mill four millimeter, um, yeah, dimension or width, I guess you would say. Um, but I wanted this to be uh, as whole, yeah, as natural as as could be. I've said that a lot. It means a lot to me. So bear with me. <laughs> um, so this birch Norwegian birch trees wood is from right here on my farm. I have my husband felled the trees. I my and my children drug the trees to the um, pile. We cut them with our own uh, machinery here on the farm into the way it had to be. We loaded them ourselves. We took them to the sawmill, and the sawmill worked with us to get this beautiful. Um, birch product and if you look closely if you if you have ordered a pair yourself and if you look closely you're you're going to see in um, 
you're going to see the grain of the wood. You're going to see um, knots in the wood. You're going to see all of the things that would have been a part of the tree. And I just find that beautiful. And when I'm working with them, I just love looking at that and knowing that it is as close as possible. Um, now, once the board is uh, the the wood is made into boards and we can use them i have used a modern laser technology it's very rare in norway um there is only yeah there's only a couple of areas in norway where this is happening it was not easy for me to get into this and um I had to really sell my product and the idea to be able to work with this equipment. So I did the drawings, I did the measurements. Um, my son, who is in graphic art, he helped me to get it digital in the way that the technology can read my design. Um, and then once it's produced and back to me, everything is made by hand. It takes um, three different sanding, hand sanding treatments uh, to get the blocker into a form that it can be used. And then once that is complete, I then developed a polish made from Norwegian beeswax, which is a farm just down at the bottom of the mountain. And he has bees and I'm learning a lot about bees from him and what I did was is I took his he he takes his um, uh, beeswax and turns it into a pellet form because he of course he sells it forward um, and what I did was is I used that beeswax and I perfected a polish with lavender and olive oil and some other things um, all natural items uh, to make a bee butter for the wood and someone on my live video called it a, a wood butter and I thought that was such a beautiful name and then I polished them so that they um, slip right into your knitting what's beautiful about the bee butter is that it's absorbed into the wood and they're they're kind of left to dry so when you get them this one is is completely dry it's not greasy and it just slips right into your knitting. And what's been really nice is that people, uh, my first shipment went out and friends have said to me that they really smell lovely. So that's also was a nice feedback. The other thing I wanted to say was, um, right now I am using a hemp, which is a, um, this is also a local product. Um, this is a hemp string made from plant fibers. And I am using that as the as the uh, hang up, so that you know traditionally they were hung like this when they were being blocked. They were actually not laid flat. Um, so this is a natural plant product hemp, and uh, I'm using that. Um, it's almost it's like it's also it's like a linen also. Um, there's a mixture, but this is a local product. And uh, I decided rather than, um, in the beginning, I thought that I was going to use the traditional kind of leather. But then again, that was commercial and it had been chemically treated. And I just decided, no, I wasn't going to do that. I was really going to stick to what I believed in. And I searched for this natural hemp product. So, yeah. Um, I am shipping them in a way that is... Um, yeah, as cheap postage as I possibly can. And um, I, I'm really, yeah, I'm just thinking of all the aspects of the product. So the mitten blockers, they come in three different sizes, large, uh, medium, and small. And uh, I do have, I think I have an, a bigger one for men. Um... I haven't ventured out any farther, but if people write me, I, I might come out with some children's sizes if there's interest, but right now I'm just sticking to uh, these products that I can manage, and if people want them, they can contact me, but um, 
I, I've made sure that the sides are kind of, uh, I maintain uh, this coloring kind of like the regular mitten. There's a lot of little, a lot of little things that I have, uh, uh, little details that I've tried to uh, hold up with the mittens. So I have three sizes of the mitten blockers, um, unless there are requests. And I have my Selbu sock blockers. They are made in the same way, except they're a little bit more labor intensive. So, um, because of the technology that I've used. But these sock blockers are, um, you, you do not think about your shoe size because traditionally that is not how they were um, made for people. You must measure the length of your foot. Um, so you're going to get your foot and you're going to measure the bottom length of it and then you'll choose your sizing. Um, that's one of the problems with sock blockers. Not only that they're covered in glue, but people often, they've just taken like a shoe size. And a shoe size um, will actually, yeah, not be right for your for your, the sock that you're knitting. So I have, yeah, I get, once again, I have taken the advice of the the mitten book, the Selbu Walter mitten book, uh, about how to uh, make my design and my sizing. So these are the sock blockers, and they come in small, medium, and large. And if you have a request or anything, um, I charge just a little bit extra for um, if you've got smaller feet or larger feet or um, to rework my design. But yes, so I am so excited. They have been well received. People are getting them now. They're sharing their feedback with me on Instagram. And uh, it's been so lovely. I, I, I will not lie. I have been so emotional about it. I can be now because when you put your whole heart into something, you, you fight for what you really want in a product. You want it to be wholesome and real and slow and then people it's well received it really means a lot to me I cannot tell you um I hope people will enjoy them for their beauty as a treasure something that will be around them even if they're not blocking to be beautiful um, but I hope that they will also uh, be practical <laughs> so and be and be useful so I just wanted to show on my podcast, this is a medium size. I've knit the average size. This fits my hand. And this is what I would knit uh, for myself. This is for me. This was my January Selby Walter Mittens. This is a real everyday pattern. I think it's in a magazine or something. And I've just had it for a long time and I've memorized it. So it's just quick. It has a beautiful thumb and... Yeah, I've knit this one so many times. You'll see you will see other people knitting this pattern on Instagram. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop it right in to the blocker and let you see kind of how it um it goes in and it just slides right on and that is the medium size. So you've got your tip up here to get your shape. And, you know, there's a little bit to stick out so that it can hang to dry. Now, traditionally, I did have this question. There's nothing for the thumb. I know it, it was Estonia. There are, there are Estonian blockers. There are Latvian blockers do not come with the thumb. Well, yes, they do come with the thumb and Estonian blockers. Um, and some of the mittens like this come with an th extra thumb, but not in Selbu. So I only wanted to make a historical reproduction. So there it is. This is the medium size. And uh, I have small. And there's also a large one. I think this is the, is this the large one? Let me hold up the, and large. And the large ones are so beautiful because you get a, you get a really, yeah, I like these. I have these hanging up as well. So, those are my blockers. You can find them on my blog. And what you do is, 
There are two stories on my blog. There are, if you're interested in the mitten blockers, you go there. You can read my farm story. Um, you, If you're interested in the sock blockers, you go there and you can read my farm story. And then you just email me your order and we handle it through PayPal. I will not have an Etsy shop or anything like that. Um, I want to handle it all myself, coming directly to me. And um, yeah, I'm just handling all of that myself through PayPal. And what else was I going to say? Yes, I. it is a slow process, as I mentioned earlier. I have had a wonderful response, but I am going to have to keep working really hard because I am trying to meet my goal. <clears throat> and that I have a ways to go. So if you know anyone that might be interested in my story, or if you know anyone that is in need of mitten blockers or sock blockers, and you have, um, if you are willing to share with them, it would mean so much to me. I want to bring my sheep home. I would like to, um, have my farm be a working farm, and um, 2018, I'm really trying to make that happen. Um, I wanted to say that I do not use Facebook, but I know that on Facebook, there are many forums about mittens. There are many forums for of people, uh, immigrants in America, and I know a lot of you have shared my vlogs there. Um, I don't know how, but sometimes I get a message if my vlog was shared uh, on some social media, but because I don't use them, I just think that's nice. But if you are willing to share my my blockers on those kinds of forums and let my and help me to get my story out there, um, I would be forever grateful. That that would mean so much to me and would help my project a lot. So that is kind of my story in a nutshell. But if you want to read my story again, um, please go to my blog. I'm going to have the link in the um, down bar here on YouTube. I'll also have a, I'll also go ahead and make a direct link to the mitten blockers and the sock blockers in case you haven't ordered and you're very interested in ordering. Today I have my second shipment going out which is in this basket. I am going to pack up all the orders um, that I have been making this week. So I work on this a little bit every night after school. I'm keeping it very balanced. So um, I come home from school and um, I have a lot of things to do for my family and then I knit a while and uh, and then I work on my project, and then I work on my uh, real job, making sure my lessons are right, and I do my spinning, and it's just working out beautifully. Um, I'm making sure I keep up my movement, and uh, and my reaching out has really been uh, the people that have um, emailed me with their orders, telling me their stories or. Um, I have decided for a little while that I am going to use um, those connections as my reaching out in my knitting bag book. Um, because people, when, when you take your orders yourself, they often write you about their connection to you or um, maybe if they're knitting the mittens. So I just want to say I love reading those stories. And um, that's one of the reasons I just want to keep my shop uh, very personal. I think I've said everything I can about my new project, except for I've got some other products coming. I am reviving a, another historical tool. It's gonna take me a while because it's quite intricate. It is connected to Mitten Day, and uh, I'm working on that now. We'll see if that happens, but um, I hope it will be uh, well received. Um, and and interesting for people so if I think of anything else I'll talk about that but yeah just so happy to finally have something that can help me reach my uh, dream but also um, revive a historical tool 
so I shared my uh, January mittens. I'll show those again because I can't remember if I showed them in the um, previous vlog. But these are my January mittens. They're knit in the Roma, let's see if I have it, three ply uh, wool. I've got my I got my next pair, pair of mittens. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Um, but I love them. And um, I, the reason that I only have uh, one pair right now is because uh, I have been working on Latvian mittens. I've been doing that kit for the kit along at Treehouse Knits. And I've done one, but I took a little break from it. Um, those uh, mittens are, are like works of art. So I'm hoping now that things are going to be settling down a little bit with some of the collaborations that I'm about to talk about, um, I'll get back to my kit along. I think we have until the end of March. So I hope you have posted your January mittens because I am going to be pulling prizes for those. One of the prizes is the Aventure Volter book. I am so excited that the Volterloge is going to be giving away one of these books. But I'm even more excited because last week I contacted the publisher and I explained my project and what I'm working on and um, I asked if I could because I have my um, yeah, I have my business number and I'm all set up legit. Um, if I could sell them through my knitography project. And uh, it took a few days, but they said yes. So I will be distributing this book. I have had, when I contacted the pu publisher, um, I made, I just said, oh, you know, let me start with about 25 books and I'll see how it goes. And, um, and I just, I'm overwhelmed at how many people want to have this book. Um, so I'm going to try to negotiate this. Of course, in Norway, this book, yeah, it's, it's not so expensive now, but books in Norway are generally expensive. So I'm not going to try to earn any money on this. Um, if you want it, it will be the price uh, maybe a little handling fee, and you are going to have to pay the postage. But I just want you to have the book. So I'm just doing it um, for my project. This is not really anything that um, uh, will benefit me except joy. And if you want it, please email me at knitography. Uh, through my project page and I will get you on the list. I will also be announcing it in my vlog and also on Instagram. So, I mean, if you don't email me, um, as soon as the publisher has negotiated the best price for me, um, I'm going to have to up my numbers so maybe I'll get an even better price. Um, but I will be distributing this book. Now, please know this book is not in English. This book is charted and I will help you through it. Um, I'm going to help you through this book. We're going to go through the stories. I thought I was going to start that this week, but then I got approved for the publishing and the dish, I mean, for, from the publisher to distribute it. Not only that, I am going to be able to show you the real mittens. I am hosting an Eventyr Vaulted trunk show. I cannot believe it. I had this idea after, well, I went to Mitten Day, first of all, in Lillehammer, which was incredible. And the Votologe was there except for one, which I was really sad I did not get to meet her. But that was, yeah, I was trying to be normal and not fangirl and all of that. It was incredible. I enjoyed it. They're just regular people. They were so kind to me. But there was all the mittens. All the mittens from the book. All of their designs. I mean, Nina also had her new mitten book there with the designs. I was hard. It was really hard to just be calm and normal and, you know, act like a regular person. But, you know, I love mittens. And there they hung on the wall. 
And of course I met lovely friends too that I only knew on Instagram. But yeah, so I don't know. I just got this book. I thought I'm going to tell the stories and all of that. And I just had this idea. I keep seeing all of these people around the world. They have they send their stuff off to trunk shows. They're going to let me have the mittens for a virtual trunk show. And I am so excited. I hope um, that it will be all of the mittens in this book. I hope it will be. Um, because I just want to go... First of all, I just want to show them to you, the original mittens in this book. I want to look at them closely. I want to tell you the story, and I just want you to get this book and knit the mittens as well. Once again, um, I have failed to go on Ravelry and find out which patterns are on the fairy tale mittens in, uh, in the ebook. But if you're not ready, to use the Norwegian book and you want to join us, then go and get yourself that ebook. I think I will try to link it below. Get yourself that ebook. Those are the ones that are published in English. Um, I'm hoping that they're going to send their other designs because they are an active group and they're making all kinds of mittens. Um, Anne Mira, Venka, I think those two are the most uh, active designers of the mittens. But those are the things coming up. I can hardly believe it. I just could not b breathe almost when I thought that they would let me. They're going to send me the mittens. I'm going to take care of them like they are the most amazing treasure ever. They will be a treasure. I mean, I've already touched them and photographed them and seen them, but just to share them with you is going to be extremely exciting. And I'm reading this book called The Green Mitten. It is so beautiful. I just hope one of them will pick up this mitten. I want to tell you this story. It's the sweetest you know, when you understand a region and you can read under it, it's just so beautiful. Auf Preisen. Not only that, I'm going to try to find the books uh, that they used in the Eventyr Volte so you can see the original story. I'm going to check those out from the library. Yeah, it's going to be so exciting coming up. So we're going to take a little detour uh, around Selbu Volte and we're going to focus on fairy tale mittens. So anyway, I'm reading this book. I'm almost finished. Um, but this should be a fairy tale mitten. I'm not a designer myself, but I'm going to try to persuade somebody to take up this story and this pattern and we shall knit it together. I think I'm going to try. So, Eventyr Volter, I really am excited. Um, the other thing I've been working on is a collaboration with Pia Camaborn from the Camabornia podcast. And, I mean, there's no secret that I love Camabornia. I love the whole world of Camabornia. And, uh, you know, I knit the shine mittens and... Um, I, Pia asked me if I would like to test knit her new mitten as she had it uh, going. And, uh, and then we just got talking and she gave me a chance to translate the English version. So that was just an honor. First of all, um, I consider myself fluent in Norwegian, and I do understand Swedish. So when you're watching the podcast, I'm sure that you're reading the text if you're not native to um, Norwegian or Swedish. But for me, I can just listen. I understand the Swedish. Um, there might be a word or two that's a little different from Norwegian, and I might have to you know, focus in on what they're talking about. But I understand Swedish and I can read it. And
And uh, I do know some of the English um, uh, trans uh, or the Norwegian and Swedish terms for knitting, but they're very different. There's some things that are the same, but there's some things that are very different, like Latvian braids, for example. Um, I think the best explanation in the whole world of a Latvian braid is in this book. I'm telling you, I will be bringing it up, but the way they describe it in the Eventyr Volter book in Norwegian, it's the best I've ever found. Um, Pia has a little different twist on it, um, and so she has used that in English. So I got that a little bit confused because between English and uh, Swedish and Norwegian, it is quite different. But other than that, I translated the pattern. I've test knit a bit of the mitten just to make sure that it's working. And now I'm on the texture pattern. And I'll tell you why I'm not farther in just a minute. But um, Pia's pattern is coming out uh, this week, I think. She's finalizing everything. And I'm going to tell you one of the joys one of the joys of being involved in a project such as this is that you get to see the layout before it's out. And in this pattern, there are some small little details uh, that, P uh, that Pia has put in that are simply dreaming. I mean, I love the aesthetics of a pattern. So the pattern, and she has said that I can talk a little bit about it. Um, so I will, um, but the pattern is called Roses Are Red, Violets Are Blue Mittens, and um, she, she tells the story of, um, I think that's one of the reasons why we connect, because she's also into stories, so she tells the story of her inspiration, she takes the time in her pattern to tell the story of the inspiration, and then she gets into the pattern, and I just think that makes it so much more personal. And that's my kind of pattern. And uh, she tells this story, and then it's such a special pattern, you're going to love it. It's an anatomically correct pattern, so it's not the shape of a sedbu mitten. Um, but the special part of the mitten of, is the part that I am finished with, and that is the cuff. And I just want to tell you about the cuff. So Pia has done it in blue. She did it in red. She did it in yellow. And I even saw that she's done it in gray. And um, the, this, this maybe isn't my color combo. But I wanted to do it in a green because she hadn't done it in a green. I wanted to use Ravmeul. And um, I just love the colors of um, pink and green together. And I thought it reminded me of spring. So um, the cuff, this is the special part. Now the rest of the mitten is in a little textured pattern. So I will finish that up this week. Um, it's mindless. It's memorizable. And uh, I will finish up that this week. And it's very simple to do an anatomically correct thumb. I'll just uh, do my increases and place that on waste yarn. But this is the part where you have to uh, begin. Now, this is a beautiful uh, pico edging. You're going to uh, learn to do a pico edging. It has a lovely peekaboo lining. That's the contrast color. It has uh, two Latvian um, braids two Latvian braids, and then here are the roses or the violets. And I did little pink um, uh, pink roses. And then you begin the mindless texture for a certain amount, and then you're gonna do your increases for your thumb. And uh, what's really nice is the texture is on the top of the hand, and then it's just mindless stockinette on the palm. It's so beautiful. I'm going to be giving away one of these patterns um, when she launches it. So be looking for that on Instagram. The day she launch launches it, I will do a giveaway uh, for my followers. I don't. I think she'll probably offer a discount as she normally does. Um, I'm also giving away. Um, 
her patterns, three of her patterns for the January mitten along, uh, rather than give away this book in January. I said I was going to give it away in January, but I'm going to save it because of the trunk show. Um, the virtual trunk show that I'm doing. So there will be books to be given away. Um, I I so enjoyed translating this pattern. I enjoyed uh, the uh, what I learned from Pia. Um, she was so patient with me. This is my first Swedish translation. Um, I learned from her. She took my pattern. There was just a few things that she pointed out. Um, and, um, and I supported her and she supported me and it was a beautiful process and we grew. It was a collaboration and only for that, it was just for joy. So I really enjoyed, uh, working on this pattern. Of course, I knit it in Roma Fin Ulgarn. I was a little off on gauge with the cuff, but, um, uh, yeah, Get you can get gauge with Roma Finu by just adjusting your needles, and I think it was just because I was trying to follow the pattern so closely, make sure that my translation was just so, and I was a little bit more, I was knitting a bit more tense. And normally, I'm a gauge knitter, I'm usually just so relaxed, but this translation meant a lot to me, and I knew it meant a lot to her because it's her pattern. And I was just, a, I guess I was just a little bit more focused than I normally am. You're going to love this pattern. It's just so delicate and beautiful. And it fits beautifully. It's a lovely cuff. And then the, the pattern is textured on the top. So that is the collaboration I had with Pia of the Camabornia podcast. Uh, that she shares with her husband Dennis and I'm going to finally get to meet them in Edinburgh. Uh, they are also a part of the podcast lounge. What else have I been working on? As I shared on my live video, I have been working non-stop on Ellie of Skein Deer's um, first yoke pattern. So that's another reason why I have been super busy. I am well into the body now. Um, this is a beautiful yoke. Um, it's It fits beautifully. It's great for a beginner. I've got to finish the body. It is, it is taking a bit longer for me. Uh, because it is a fin you know, it's close to fingering weight. It's, yeah. So I am knitting away. And uh, I don't know that I'm going to get this uh, finished before Ellie uh, does her, releases her pattern. I don't know when she's releasing it. Um, but because I got a late start uh, on the test knit. But uh, as I understand it, Ellie has already knit this size and has an understanding for it. So I think she was just being kind to let me uh, to test knit. But I am using um, Norwegian wool. I am using Osk, which is one of my favorites. Uh, Hillesvog and Roma are in my top two. I'm enjoying knitting it. It's just mindless now. Um, Ellie uh, allows you to choose uh, if you want shaping or not shaping. And yeah, she she's has a lot of thought going on in this pattern. But usually I don't put any shaping in my body. So I'm just knitting away on the body. And, um, I'm, I'm, yeah, when I get more settled and closer to the end, I'm going to tell you about the inspiration for this pattern. I'm going to tell you the story and, uh, because it comes from a very special mountain and, and story and the music is beautiful. I'm going to tell you a lot about this when I get further along, but I am working on that. I am working on my Telia. I got a little inspiration to take this to a couple of meetings this week. Uh, it's in black. It's a denser gauge for my Lopi, so it's taking me forever. But I am working on my Telia sweater. But I just have to kind of stop and get these collaborations going on so that people can get their patterns out. I'm still working on my Edinburgh jumper. 
the fern and feather. That's going to take precedent in um, my winter holiday. I've got my kit going on for my Latvian mitten. And I wanted to tell you, on my live video, I shared the Selbywalter mitten um, that I thought I was going to cast on. But then my friend Mickey sent me this a uh, pamphlet from Roma. It's very, I cannot find a copy of this anywhere. And she found one in a cast off bin and she sent it to me. And it's always been my dream to knit these mittens on the cover. I haven't even told her that I received it because I received it yesterday. But this is an absolutely beautiful um, uh, pamphlet that Roma Ul put out. So I'm changing my plans. And I thank Mickey so much. And not only that, she's coming to my city in September. And I'm going to get to be with her in real life. She's just hopping right over here after Shetland Wool Week. So um, we have never met in person, but we have, we Skype together and knit. And she is just going to, you know, be, take it, take it. Um, and she's going to come to my city to visit me. So I am so excited. What's really nice about this pamphlet is you can see the Selbu socks in here that they would have used for the blockers that I've made. These are the long strumper. Now my, my blockers would not um, uh, uh, accommodate those, but they would accommodate these um, Selbu socks. And you know, Ellie, she has her selbu socks out, so they're perfect for that. They fit perfectly with my selbu sock, and I've got to get my other one knit. Um, I could not stop knitting this sock, and I just haven't cast on the other one because I needed to stop and help with this yoke. So I'm working on that. I have gotten my lopey yarn for the winter sole or winter sole uh, that I'm going to be knitting with friends. This is my Letlopi that just came from Iceland. I was waiting for it. My yarn shop was waiting for a, a, a new delivery and uh, it just came from the air. You know, they delivered it. Uh, I think it came off the plane and they texted me at school. And this is the body of my winter sole. This is the yoke, and these are the, uh, is that right? Yeah, these are the wheat colors uh, for the yoke. So I'm so excited to cast that on. I have to tell you, I've been a little bit overwhelmed with my knitting. I have a lot of knitting going on. I, yeah, I got a little overwhelmed because I have a lot of things over on the needles and normally that doesn't bother me. Um, I'm usually like, I'm not the kind of person where projects are laying around and, uh, and it bothers me. I just work on them as I feel. But when you're working with other people and it is their patterns and their livelihood and their designs and you, you know, it's a, it's, it's quite a, it's quite a stressful experience. Not, not in a bad way, but just you, you really, yeah, you really want to support them. And so I have a lot, I realize I have a lot going on personally with my knitting, but then to add on something that becomes a personal for someone else, that's, that's a really, really interesting um, experience because you really want to do well for them and you want them to be successful and get their patterns out because they live from it. I mean, I live from my real world job and, um, and yeah, so I take that very seriously. Anyway, so that, I, I've gotten the project finished with Pia, except for just continuing to knit, but this pattern is perfect. It's ready for release. Um, I know Ellie has a lot of input, so she's probably, you know, just me sharing it, and um, uh, yeah, I don't know what information uh, she'll need because as I, as I know, many people are already finished, but 
yeah, I feel a lot more relaxed now about uh, co my collaborations. I was trying to think if there was anything else I've got going on. Um, and I have a lot of dreams. I have a lot of things that I want to knit. So my February mittens, um, of course, I will continue with my uh, roses are red, violets are blue mittens. But my Selbu Walter mittens, I'm going to cast on. And luckily, I have uh, the winter break. I'm also going to knit. I got my, uh, I showed you just a second ago. I got, because I want to knit um, Ellie's, the last, I want to say, Cavello mittens. I want to knit the very last out of the Selbu Mitten Club. And I had really decided that was going to be my extra mitten. So maybe I'll get those cast on because those will be a quick knit. But I'm dreaming about these mittens. And I I cannot tell you how excited I am um, to knit these mittens. Also, I want to knit the new mittens by uh, Anne Mira, the Bora Voltena, I think they're called. They're so beautiful. They they don't have any color work, but they're like perfect for skiing. So they've got some garter stitch, and uh, I might cast those on this week. I want to have those for, um, for winter break for skiing. And I know my friend Hege Meretta has just finished the most gorgeous gray pair. <sighs> There's so many mittens I want to knit. I need more hands, but... Yeah, have I told you everything? I told you about the trunk show. I told you about my projects. I've got the mittens going on. I'm going to draw for prizes. I've been working on collaborations. I just wanted to say hello to you today. And I, I hope this was logical. And yeah, just an update from the farm. I'm getting so excited about Edinburgh, mostly because I'm going to be with my friends. Um, there's a lot you have to do for the podcaster lounge, I have to say. Not not any pressure, but you know, you need to be there if you've told people you're going to be there. And uh, I've got my buttons and uh, I'll be handing out my buttons. I wanted to say, if you're interested in getting one of my buttons... Um, please email me. Um, I can't send them to you for free because my buttons are quite, they're, they're expensive. And also there's the postage. Um, I tried to pop them. I thought about popping them into, uh, when I sent out my packages, but I realized, you know, I can't, I can't afford that. Um, I wish I could send everything to everyone, but I can't. But my buttons cost about a dollar and twenty five cents each, and then there would be postage, so maybe two dollars and fifty cents or something. If you're interested in one of my buttons, you you watch the vlogs, and you're interested, just pop me an email. I don't know if this is going to show up backwards, but it is my logo. It's a very very special button. Um, mine looks very different from other people's buttons. I use a very small family company uh, to make them. So they're, um, in a way, they're kind of handmade. Um, they do the technology and make the buttons themselves. So I that was very important to me. So yeah, if you're if you want a button, just email me uh, through my vlog or text me. Uh, a message on Instagram and we could do that through PayPal. I've got another really exciting thing like that coming. I hope I can share it in my vlog. What I'm going to do, not just my button, but something connected to my farm project. Another project that makes sure that I use all of the um, wood from the board. So I'll let you know about that soon. I thought it would be ready today, but it isn't. Lots of exciting things coming up. I am going to be drawing for prizes. I haven't decided if I'm going to go live tonight and do it or if I'll just announce it on Instagram. But I am going to uh, do the prizes today um, for the January Mittens. And I have three patterns from Pia. Uh, she, do, she has... Um, 
said that it's okay that I give a, give away three of her patterns, although I'm going to sponsor those through my Nidography project. So thank you, friends, for joining me. Um, if you have any questions or if you want to share any feedback, you can email me through my project page where my blockers and yeah, my mitten blockers and my sock blockers are for sale, or you can contact me directly on Instagram. Thank you for being here with me this week. I will be back next week. I say that. I said that last week, but I my plan is to pop in uh, during the weekend just for an update. I'm going to keep trying to do that. Either that or I'll go live on Instagram. Thank you, friends, for joining me, and have a wonderful week. If you're interested in my mitten blockers, please do contact me, and if you know anyone you can share them with, I will appreciate it so deeply. See you next time.